What's up, trombone players? We're going to be going through Jolly Old St. Nicholas today. It's holiday music time. Let's go. So the first thing you notice when you drop into Jolly Old St. Nicholas is that you've got three distinct lines. So in a music making sense, each line belongs to a different person. So if I were in like a classroom, I would say, Susie, play line A. Jo Johnny, play line B. And uh, Draven, play line C. And each one of them would play their individual line. So when you look at these parts, don't get afraid that like you've got all these notes to play. It's actually just one line. They just provide all three of them there so you can see and make choices about what you want to play. You may be thinking, uh, Mr. Butler, what part do I play? Are you going to tell us what to play? And I would say, no, I'm not going to tell you what part to play. But I will tell you what part is the easiest, medium easiest, and the hardest. I have a handy little chart here. A is the hardest, B is kind of like middle of the road, and C is the easiest. So when you're looking at the amount of work, definitely uh, take a look at whatever you feel inclined to do. Again, I won't tell you what part to play, so it's your choice if you want to play A or B or C. When you're inside of Smart Music and you're looking at these parts, remember that the My part is going to play all three A, B, and C parts at the same time. It's a little bit hard to hear which part is yours, because of that, I made these YouTube videos to make it more clear what the notes are supposed to sound like from that particular line. Also, when you go to record, make sure you click on your individual part so that you can be sure that that's the one that Smart Music is grading you against. For instance, if you're going to be playing part C, make sure you have part C clicked. When you look at the two different parts in Smart Music, the two assignments that I've given you, you'll see part one is just measure one through four, and then part two is measure five, six, seven, eight, back to the beginning, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then nine and 10. So part two is significantly longer, a little bit more challenging than the first part. So budget your time when you're practicing. In this song, there are repeats and endings. And I just kind of alluded to it by skipping the first ending, but let me just kind of sing it to you so you understand. So when you play through this, whatever line you play, it'll be like all that's business as usual. The two dots though at the end will take you back to the beginning so that you'll play it again. And when you play it the second time, you will actually skip over measure six and go straight to measure nine and 10 because this new thing is the first ending. Measure seven and eight is the first ending, the first time you play. And then the second ending is measure nine and 10, the second time you play it. When I play my instrument and show you what it sounds like, you'll understand better what's going on. Okay, I've clicked on part A. I will now hit record and record all of line A for you. Here goes the B part. Make sure you click on it before you record. And then finally, here's the C part. Make sure you click on it before you record. Thank you. 
if you've made it this far, if you have been practicing and able to play this song, some some form of it, just understand I am super duper proud of you. This is hard stuff. Doing music is hard. It's the hard thing. And I couldn't be happier with your progress so far. Keep trying, keep working with me privately or in group lessons, um, live instruction, and we'll keep making the progress that you want to make in order to make this song happen. Good work. I look forward to hearing your jolly old St. Nicholas.